Again, welcome Mr. Kira Liu's um, class to Port St. Lucie's Virtual Town Hall for Youth. My name is Melissa and I'd like to introduce your panelists. We would like to engage and get you guys in, interested in local government. And first on our panel is Officer Nags. He's from the Port St. Lucie Police Department. Good morning. Then second is uh, our Communications Director, Sarah Prohaska. Good morning. And then we have right there in the middle is our mayor. She is Shannon Martin. Good morning, everybody. Then over here uh, um, on to my right is Ella Gilbert. Good morning. She's our deputy city attorney. And then on the end right here is uh, Kate Parmalee, and she's our strategics initiative director. Good morning. And I'm going to hand it off to you, Mr. Kirillo, if you can introduce, maybe give us an, a brief overview of your class and what you do. Uh, you have 11th and 12th graders, and then introduce your first student. Okay, so this class is the first quarter is government, second quarter is economics, so we're technically in economics now. Um, government class covers a little bit of everything from Bill of Rights, the Constitution, American history, um, all the way to the different branches, Congress, state, local government, presidency and judicial branch. Um, all right, so first student is addressing Kate Parmley. David's question was, how are you going to help fix the potholes in my area? Good morning. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, that's a great question. You know, local government is the government closest to you. And yes, we are the the, play, the government you should contact if you see a pothole. Um, the answer to that is really um, we you know we repair our public works department repairs potholes as soon as they are reported. So I just wanted to advise if you see a pothole in your neighborhood that's not being fixed, the city may not be aware of it. So please let us know as soon as possible um, so we can ensure that a temporary patch can be placed on that pothole and then it is scheduled for um, for a permanent repair um, as soon as possible or you know as funds are available um, we um, actually have um, a wonderful our, our city council has allocated more funding to roadway repaving in our budget so we're able to repair repair um, roadways quicker we have a 10-year repaving master plan found at the city of psl.com slash repaving so if you want to see when your roadway may be repaved that map can be found. But I want to make sure if you see a pothole in uh, on a street, let us know as soon as possible just to make sure that it's in our system, that we're aware of it. We try to scan, of course, constantly for potholes. But if we missed one, we, we you know, you are our eyes and ears, too, for your city. So tell us through um, calling us on, at 1PSL, which is 871-1775. 772-871-1775. Or visit us at cityofpsl.com slash 1PSL or download our app, which is the 1PSL app in the App Store. On the App Store, you can actually take a picture of the location of the pothole, send it in, it goes immediately to our staff, we assign it and we get it a cruise out there. So we, we would really appreciate you letting us know if you see anything that we may not have become aware of because potholes come up, you know, and we have a, actually a, a city of 120 square miles. So uh, we just appreciate your help and we wanna make sure that we get those holes, potholes patched quickly and eventually repaved. So thank you for that question. Yeah. All right, my next student, uh, Josh, and he has a question directed to Ella Gro uh, Gilbert. So my question is, uh, what did you have to do to get to where you are now? Tunnel. <laughs> Good morning, Josh. Uh, I'm going to answer this in three parts. <coughs> There is an education component, there's an experience component, and there's a skill set. So what I had to do as far as education is concerned, first I had to obtain a bachelor's degree. Um, immediately after I received my bachelor's degree, I earned an, my master's degree, and then I started my uh, career. But in order to become a, an attorney, I would have to go to law school. So I then attended law school and passed the bar exam and became an attorney, um, which was later in life, not immediately after um, the bachelor's and the master's. Now, exper the experience component. I worked in government affairs for 10 years before I decided to go to law school. 
And in that time, I worked in a variety of um, governmental entities, a regional transportation authority, the second largest county in the state of Florida as a lobbyist, in the tax collector's office, which is another um, constitutional office at the local level. Um, and then I went to law school, and then now I have the position I have here in the city attorney's office. And then the next area is um, skills. Now, what I needed in order to get to the place that I am is, first of all, good analytical skills, the ability to analyze, reason, take a concept, um, take it apart, look at both sides of the issue, come to a logical conclusion. The next thing, which is really, really important, is communication skills. You need really good um, written and verbal communication skills. And then the last part, which is something that I feel is really, really important, is interpersonal skills. And I really thrive on that because I believe that you have to have the ability to work well with other people, to meet people where they are, to help them, to provide them the information that they need, and to see if, they, if, if there's any additional information that you need to provide. So education, experience, as well as skills is what got me to where I am right now. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next person will be John, and his question is directed to uh, Mayor Shannon Martins. How are you doing, Ms. Mayor? How are you doing? Um, so my question is, what's the best part about working in City Hall? The very best part of working in City Hall is the people that I get to work with every single day. It takes a huge team effort to get all the things we need to get done for all of you. Um, and we have amazing people who are extremely professional, trained, and just really awesome at what they do, whether it's our police department, our communications department, our city attorney's office. We just have great people, and to be able to work with them every day is awesome because our job, our main job, is to serve our citizens. And again, it takes that team effort, and I, I just so love it very much. Thanks for that question. Thank you. Uh, next student is Nico, and his uh, question is directed to uh, Sarah Prohaska. My question is, how can I plan a fan at a civic center? All right, Nico. Hi. Thank you for that question. So our we've got we've got a couple really great venues where if you want to have an event at the city of Port St. Lucie, they are available um, to rent or to um, plan your event at. The first one is our Mid Florida Event Center. We used to call it the Civic Center, but it is now um, the Mid Florida Event Center. And that's on the east side of town. I'm sure y'all have been there at least once in your lifetime if you've lived in Port St. Lucie. Um, that's where we have our Festival of Lights and our Fall Fun Fest outside. Um, but the Mid Florida Event Center is a full service event center. They do weddings, they do graduations, they do meetings, um, they do everything. So if, if you really want to play an event there, all you have to do is call them and they have great customer oriented staff who will help you get you set up, tell you what it is not free because we do, um, it, it takes, takes money to run these um, mm -hmm. facilities. So we, there is a charge, um, but they can walk you through how much it costs, um, what days are available. I'd say if you're planning on wanting to book an event there, get in touch with them soon because it's a very popular spot and they, are, they, they do get booked. Um, but we also have our Port St. Lucie Community Center, which is more in the center of town, um, um, where our, we do a lot of parks and recreation classes there. And, but they also have places available, rooms available to, um, to plan an event at if you want to have a kind of a smaller event or even, actually, they do pretty big events there too. So um, there, are, there are great options in the city um, run by the city government that it's just another service that the government provides for residents is um, we have a strategic plan we follow, and one of our strategic goals is to provide culture, nature, and fun um, opportunities for our residents, and those two facilities and facilities like that are a big part of fulfilling that strategic goal and giving people a, go, a place to go to have an event and to have fun. 
Our school is actually at numerous events. At the Civic Center, we have our graduation there yearly. And then at the uh, Community Center, we've had events in the past as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next student is Adam, and his question is directly, uh, directed to the mayor, Mayor Martin. <clears throat> Howdy. Um, so I'd like to ask, what event in your life caused you to turn towards politics? In other words, why did you choose this path in your life? Good morning, Adam. Thanks for that question. Um, there really wasn't one event. It was always um, a desire to serve. And it really started back in high school for me. But then the really the right time uh, where I really wanted to get involved was when I moved here to Port St. Lucie 16 years ago. My husband and I moved here to raise our family, and we knew that this was the place that we were gonna be forever. So that was really when I decided to start getting involved and paying attention to what was going on in city government, to our meetings, to all the different things that were happening. And um, I started getting involved in our community, and that's, I've loved serving, and I've always loved serving, and always wanted to serve. So that's what got me moving in that direction. And in addition, my husband is a police officer, so um, his call to serve happened at a very young age as well. So we really just wanted to be um, doing things that we could serve our community together. Thank you for that. Fantastic. Uh, next student will be uh, Lexi, and her question is directed to uh, Kate Parmalee. <coughs> Question is what efforts are they making to address the overpopulated roads of Port St. Lucie? Good morning, Lexi, and, and that's a great question. Um, so, in terms of when we analyze um, our roadway system, we actually our public works department and our and, and, and other city departments that are engaged in that continually review and they analyze the city's um, roadways to determine where improvements are needed. Um, these projects are then placed onto the city's capital improvement plans. We actually have a long-term plan that provides funding to widen roadways, to, re to reconfigure roadways, to plan new roads. So that is constantly done. Um, sometimes the city funds the projects with our taxpayer dollars or with um, funding from that we help get from the state of Florida through the Florida Department of Transportation, sometimes through the federal government as well. Um, there is recent, there, the city council has been working on a mobility fee, which will provide additional funding for roadway improvements. And, um, and every year we ask this question in our National Community Survey Citizen Survey. So if you or your, if your uh, parent has received that survey in their household, please tell them to fill that out. They can let us know how we're doing on roadway improvements. It gives an, uh, we, we, we randomly sample Port St. Lucie residents. We also offer an online survey every year where you can give that kind of feedback. We also have a citizen summit every year that we recommend everyone come to the uh, to our annual citizen summit where you can speak to this issue if there's a, if there's a roadway in particular that you want to give us input on. Um, we have many opportunities. You can call us anytime, of course, but those are just some intentional opportunities to gather feedback from residents about our roadway system. The city is growing, has grown quickly, so we do know that we um, have, and we know that mobility and roadway improvements are an area that we have to continue to invest in, um, and the city council has been very um, proactive in addressing um, opportunities to improve our roadways and, and also um, improve our paths and sidewalks and walking trails. Um, the city of Port St. Lucie was originally planned without a lot of that infrastructure in place. So the city has had to play catch up a bit because the city was laid out with a lot of that infra without a lot of that infrastructure uh, by the original developer. So we, um, we look forward to receiving your input on where you have areas of concern um, because that helps us prioritize. We have a citizen-driven, resident-driven, and strategic planning process that helps the city council um, get feedback on, on where we need to invest. So thank you for that question and for your, um, for your interest in local government. Thank you. Um, our next student is Kevin, and this question is directed to Officer Fred Dax. is what is the hardest part of your job? Uh, Kevin, good morning. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for the question. Um, I want to start by saying uh, 
in law enforcement, our job, our, our realm is very uh, vast and wide. So we deal with a lot of different things on uh, any given day. First and foremost, um, I would say the hardest part in law enforcement, and I can only speak for myself, um, is probably dealing with death. So, um, you know, we, we do see a number of different things. Again, uh, any given day could be very different. We could have days where we're, we're dealing with, um, you know, past events such as like um, you know, vehicle burglaries or barking dogs or um, we're just uh, settling neighbor disputes. Uh, but it's those days when we're going to what, what we would refer to as um, hot calls, um, burglaries in progress, fights in progress. Um, some of our most dangerous things that we deal with are domestic disturbances. Uh, a, a traffic stop, every traffic stop is different. So um, we, we deal with a lot of different things. And again, I can only speak for myself and say that um, that's probably the most difficult in all that is dealing with death. And then uh, lastly, I would say that uh, dealing with uh, some, some of the best people on their worst days. Um, we are all human. Um, and we, we can all have bad days at times. Um, so it, it's trying to uh, settle disputes with um, sometimes someone that's never dealt with law enforcement before. Um, so I, I would say thank you. I appreciate your question. That's, that's what I would say is difficult about this job. Thank you. Officer Nags, uh, if I could just add in there, what is the, your favorite part of working in your position? You talked about the negative, but there's a lot of positives being a police officer in the city of Port St. Lucie. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so a positive parts in law enforcement are dealing with the public um, vastly. Um, I'm out in the community every day in, in my job. Um, mainly it's, it's conversation. Uh, I have a lot of conversation with a lot of different people from uh, children all the way up to our uh, senior citizens. And uh, I think that's probably the best is uh, showing that law enforcement officers are human. Uh, and uh, one, when we are wearing the uniform, we are approachable. But two, the second part is, is we do go home, um, whether it's during the day or at night, because we're 24-7 we're operation. Um, we, we have families, and we have loved ones. Uh, we are human as well. So uh, I think the best part is that human interaction. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Killer. Students is Rebecca, and her question is directed to Mayor Martin. Hi, um, my question is, why don't we add more streetlights? Good morning, Rebecca. So believe it or not, streetlights is a touchy subject here in Port St. Lucie. And the reason why I say that is because there's a lot of people who really like them, and there's a lot of people who really don't like them. But what's important for you to know is that if you do want them, particularly in your neighborhood on your street, is that we have a process for street lighting by which you can petition and apply for street lights on your street. And then how that works is the clerk's office will send out notices to everybody, on, all the homeowners on your street, and start that process of asking the residents on the street if they want street lights. And it's a very democratic process because all of the people on your street can then vote if you want street lights or not. And if you do, there's a fee of $26 a year that will be attached to your parents' uh, tax bill and all the homeowners' tax bill on the street. And all the people on the street can then vote. And if the votes come in at 50% uh, plus one, then street lights uh, will go on your street. It'll come forward to city council. We'll approve the boundary area. 
And then about eight months after that approval, FPNL will come out and put the street lights in. So if your family or any of your neighbors want to start that process, you can give my office a call at 871-5159 and my assistant will be very happy to get you to the clerk's office and walk you through. But you can have street lights. <laughs> Why do some people have strong opinions against street lights? Um, people say that they like to look at the stars. They, th they don't like light pollution. They've come from other areas um, where they've moved from and there were a lot of lights and they no longer want them. Um, so those are the main reasons that we found where why people don't want them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, so on behalf of my class, I thank you uh, for taking the time out to answer our questions. And thank you for serving our city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks Mr. K. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Great Mr. questions. Mr. K, before we close up, we just want to say one thing to your students, if you don't mind. We want to remind you guys to stay in school. It's so important to stay in school. And once you get that degree, come work for us. You guys seem very interested in local government. You can first start off by becoming an intern with the city of Port St. Lucie. You can even volunteer and get involved with our parks and recreation or keep Port St. Lucie beautiful. Learn more about our city government, and we would love to have you um, as a part of our class or a part of our, our workforce. Um, and one more thing to you, Mr. K, if you're interested in ever having a speaker come to your class, let us know. Maybe we can do our best to, to have a speaker and, and you can have more interaction with somebody from maybe our panelists or from another part of our local city government. And again, we appreciate you so much for taking the time, Somerset Preparatory Academy, Mr. K's uh, government class and being a part of this. And uh, I'm here for you. If you need anything, you have my email address. Reach out to me, and uh, we can set something up for you. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.